Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the presentation of the GPAY Working Group on the Responsible Development and Use of AI. I have the honor of moderating this panel with the co-chairs of the Working Group, who are two very distinguished AI experts. Yoshua Bengyo is a pioneer in deep learning, a professor, the most cited computer scientist in the world, and the scientific director of the Montreal Institute for Learning Algorithms, known as MILA. Raja Shatila is Professor of Robotics and Ethics at Pierre et Marie Curie University in Paris, where he's also the director of the Institute of Intelligent Systems and Robotics and of the Human Machine Interaction Laboratory of Excellence. Raja also chairs the IEEE's pioneering global initiative for ethical considerations in artificially intelligent and autonomous systems. Yoshua and Raja, welcome to the session. Raja, um, hi Raja. The the GPI was launched. The GPI was launched in June this year, and the working group on responsible AI held its first meeting uh, in July, I believe. Could you start us off by telling us a little bit about the composition of the group? Who who are the experts that participate? Sure. So we have uh, thirty members. And uh, the group uh, is, as you know, very international. It's uh, a group that is uh, composed of uh, 30 members, as I said, 12 men women. Uh, it has a um, wide span in terms That's of uh, technical competence, uh, AI and uh, information technologies, 14 persons, uh, 16 from other domains, psychology, philosophy, law, uh, political sciences. Uh, in terms of uh, background, 19 are academics, five from the private sector, four from nonprofit, and two from the public sector. Uh, the uh, composition actually is uh, related to the countries. So uh, we have 16 countries or international entities uh, who designated members, Australia, Canada, the European Commission, France, Germany, India, Italy, Japan, Korea, Mexico, New Zealand, Singapore, Slovenia, the UK, UNESCO, and the United States. In addition to the members, we have also seven observers uh, who are here for their uh, competence, two from the OECD, actually. Uh, uh, and uh, As you know, the OECD is already a strategic partner of the GPI, and we work uh, hand in hand with the OECD. So that's the global picture. Thank you very much, Raja, for, for introducing the working group. Uh, and there's there's huge interest and excitement uh, on the OECD side and in, in working closely with the GPAY. Um, Joshua, could you tell us about the mandate of the working group? Um, so what were the key framing elements when you started off and, and how uh, this mandate was developed? Right. Um, so we had a lot of discussion about uh, the mandate of the working group. Um, of course, it starts by uh, looking at the Global Partnership on AI's overall mission, and uh, it tries to be aligned with that, um, with a vision of um, AI as technology that is human-centered, that's really central. Uh, that means fair, respectful of human rights, respectful of democracy, and aiming at contributing positively to public goods in general, in a way that, of course, is equitable and inclusive. So uh, putting all these things together, we came up with the, the following uh, official mandate. The responsible AI working group strives to foster and contribute to the responsible development, use, and governance of human-centered AI systems in congruence with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Now, um, it, it's something that is still uh, very broad, but uh, our goal is to go from these high-level principles to actionable items that really take advantage of the situation uh, that we are in to uh, uh, suggest how the countries that are part of GPAY can coordinate and work together to achieve those goals. Thank you, Joshua. And uh, the, the focus on human-centered AI is very much uh, a shared goal um, in, uh, also in the, on the, in the OECD's work. Um, 
Now I'd like to turn back to Raja to tell us about the activities of the working group to date, the, you know, the, what's happened in the meetings, the, what are the working methods and, and the initial report um, that will be presented in a few minutes. Yes, so the process actually started on July 31st. Uh, that was the launch uh, meeting. And we had five uh, working group meetings since. Uh, and uh, the uh, first thing is to adopt the mandate. So we discussed about the mandate and uh, we have decided about the mandate that uh, Joshua just uh, presented and planned the work and decided the deliverables. So uh, one uh, point which was very important is really to uh, be up to date on all the initiatives and uh, uh, the uh, activities related to responsible AI worldwide. Uh, and this is our first product. The uh, uh, idea was to uh, appoint a, uh, uh, a uh, um, uh, consultant to review this, these uh, various uh, initiatives and to provide a report. This will be presented in a minute. Uh, and uh, we wanted also, and that's very, very important, not to stay on the levels of principle, but also practical projects and going from uh, theory to practice, from principles to practice. Uh, this is, of course, is, is very, very important. So we decided this in uh, September and we created a steering committee uh, to evaluate. There was a call for tenders and nine proposals were received. And uh, the steering committee nine uh, has uh, uh, evaluated the nine proposal and selected the future society to uh, provide this this work and uh, the uh, uh, future society actually has done a really uh, an excellent work uh, uh, in a very short period of time uh, with uh, meetings very uh, frequent meetings with the steering committee as uh, you can see five uh, meetings uh, in, in, in less than uh, 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 40 days, uh, meetings with the whole group, one-to-one uh, -one meeting with uh, members uh, sometimes, and also work sessions uh, uh, to, to explain a little bit or to interact and have feedback from the group. So that was really very, very exciting and, and very active period, these interactions. Uh, and as a result, uh, we are uh, launching, uh, uh, we'll get back to that in a minute, but I think let's hear first from uh, uh, probably the Future Society now to, to explain the, their own uh, process with this. Thank you, Raja, for providing the, the background and process leading up to the report uh, developed by the Future Society with and for the GPI work, GPAY Working Group on the Responsible Development and Use of AI. I'm happy to invite Nikki Iliadis, who's a senior um, AI policy researcher and project manager at the Future Society, to present the report. Uh, Nikki, could you tell us about how you went about developing the report and about its key findings? Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you, Corinne. And let me also say thank you to the co-chairs, Raja and Yashua, as well as to the rest of the working group members and the team in Montreal for the opportunity to work on this project, uh, the mission of which is very closely aligned to that of the future society, and that is to advance the responsible adoption of AI for the benefit of all of humanity. Uh, before presenting the report and some of its findings, I also want to acknowledge my teammates, Nico, Nicholas, uh, Caroline, Delfina, Sasha, and our advisors, Sarah and Suzanne, for all the incredible work they've done in the past two months to really shape this final product. So uh, the report itself, I guess you could say, is divided into three core parts with intertwined objectives. First, we really wanted to div uh, map diverse initiatives that are fostering responsible AI worldwide. Second, we wanted to develop an assessment criteria framework that has two key functions, one to shortlist a sample of the most promising initiatives and then to further analyze them to really understand what are the opportunities and what are the gaps in the landscape. And third, based on that analysis, we wanted to propose concrete recommendations that really facilitate cross-sectoral and international collaboration for the promotion and for the fostering of responsible AI. 
So uh, to achieve these obje objectives, the team started by conducting a high level review of the landscape. So of course we leveraged existing repositories that are already out there as well as our own work at TFS. And as a result, you can see now in the report, a catalog that features 214 initiatives. Uh, this isn't a comprehensive list, but it does really capture how broad and diverse the, the field of responsible AI truly is. So you can see initiatives that are codes of conduct or guidelines or principles that are really prescribing a future that we aspire to when it comes to developing and deploying AI. Those are in the AI and ethics category. You can also find uh, initiatives that are operationalizing responsible AI, so audit mechanisms or standards and certifications, et cetera. Those are in the AI and governance category. And lastly, you can also find applied projects that are advancing SDGs in a responsible manner. Those are in the AI and social good category. So while crowdsourcing information to come up with this catalog, we're also working with the steering committee quite closely to develop the common assessment framework that I just mentioned. There are four criteria in that assessment framework. The first one is an initiative's potential to really contribute to the GPI objectives and to the mandate that Joshua just uh, explained. The second is also an initiative's diversity and inclusiveness. The third, its effectiveness, um, especially in regard to the OECD AI principles and the UN SDGs. And the fourth, its effectiveness, uh, its maturity and potential for adoption. So the methodology for how this was built and how it was implemented is explained in the report. But in brief, we moved uh, through two evaluation rounds from 214 initiatives to 64, and then to a final heterogeneous subset of uh, promising initiatives. So these 30 are featured in the report. And there's really interesting information there as well around their key success factors and challenges and hurdles, as well as how they were evaluated on the four criteria that I just mentioned. And building on that analysis, um, as well as really, really valuable input from the working group members themselves, which we gathered from uh, the three working group meetings, the three feedback sessions, several one-to-ones, and several interactive documents online as well that I think yielded more than 400 comments, we were able to identify four areas for future action and nine recommendations. So the first area for future action, that one has to do very much about focusing and prioritizing. So we suggest that the working group prioritizes resources towards the most pressing global issues that are on national and global agendas. And the working group has actually already identified four initial areas to channel efforts towards based on uh, their relevance, their urgency, their feasibility, and their potential for international collaboration. And I believe the co-chairs will present and discuss these in just a bit. Then the second area for future action is about ensuring initiatives are designed for impact. Uh, our research found that many of the initiatives in the ecosystem have unclear metrics and beyond measurement, they also lack clear impact pathways. So uh, this makes it difficult to really evaluate performance, specifically when it comes to advancing the sustainable development goals or the sub goals. A third challenge is the need to cultivate a strong ecosystem with ability to support and stimulate change. So to build this ecosystem, there is uh, a strong need for governance tools and frameworks that promote transparency and also alter incentives to help the stakeholders in the ecosystem really practice responsible AI. We also found a need for systematic collaboration across the ecosystem, and we feel GPI is very well placed to partner with organizations like OECD, like UNESCO, like WHO, to uh, defragment the ecosystem. And finally, for um, there's a need for in order for governments to implement these frameworks and tools to build capacity amongst policymakers. The fourth and the last area for future action has to do with respecting and championing diversity and inclusion. So again, although a lot of the initiatives had multi-stakeholder processes, we saw that uh, many struggled with collecting representative input to inform their activities. And this lack of inclusiveness ultimately points to a lack of capacity that uh, initiatives have in involving a wider group in the technological transition and hence in co-shaping really innovative solutions for addressing the opportunities and risks of that transition. So ultimately, we also think that this lack of inclusiveness can undermine uh, their effectiveness and credibility and their ability to scale. Uh, once again, thank you. We hope this research proves useful in shaping the agenda of the working group. And we look really look forward to the upcoming months to seeing that work unfold. And beyond that, we hope that it's useful for the ecosystem as a whole, providing a snapshot of where the ecosystem is at. And again, identifying areas for future action and collaboration 
to further promote and to foster responsible AI. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Nikki. Uh, and congratulations to you and the steering group uh, and the team on producing such a comprehensive report over what is really a very short period of time. Uh, and I must say from the OECD side that we think it could be very valuable to also make available some of this work on the OECD AI Policy Observatory where we have some, some, some related initiatives and so we could join forces on that. Um, so now I'd like to turn to the future and ask both of our distinguished co-chairs about your priorities say over the next six, three, three to six months short term uh, and what uh, you see as the main focus areas of the working group um, uh, in the near future. Um, so would, would any one of you like to take this question? Yeah, I'll get started. Um, thanks, Karine. So our goal is to really um, take advantage of the great work uh, that the Future Society has uh, uh, done with this report and look forward to areas where we can contribute to identifying efforts uh, for responsible AI in, 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 in a way that's uh, a focused where current markets, current market structure, um, current government policies are not yet sufficient to achieve uh, the goals of responsible AI and advancing the uh, SDGs. So, so uh, we've come up with five committees for the next three to six months. Uh, the idea is to expand that in, in the future after that. But for, for starters, um, we've created uh, two kinds of committees. Uh, and I'm gonna start with the committees that are more directly addressing concrete SDG motivated areas of AI for social good. So one is on drug discovery, the other is on climate change. And the third is on education. Let me tell you a few more words about each of them. So the Committee on Drug Discovery and Open Science uh, will examine how to create a favorable international context for AI to contribute to drug discovery in an open science and equitable manner, uh, whereby international public health needs are privileged. Uh, for example, fighting COVID-19 or antibiotics resistance uh, we also want to think about how these R&D efforts uh, could be organized, uh, coordinated, um, and what sort of rules of engagement uh, should be put together uh, by, by governments around the world working together to ensure that, um, of course, the, the, the created data and the created results are shared but also that the licensing of resulting drugs will be favorable to poor countries as well as to contributing countries. Um, the second committee that I mentioned, the Committee on Climate Change, uh, is also going to be looking at biodiversity. It will elaborate practical recommendations for collaborative approaches to fight climate change using AI. For example, ensuring that AI is making zero carbon renewables as productive as traditional hydrocarbon suppliers or how AI could be used to develop uh, new materials for fighting climate change. And then on the other hand, how AI itself should not be hurting the environment. Uh, for example, um, with the design of uh, tools to better evaluate the environmental impact of the computations involved uh, in machine learning. The third committee is on AI and education and it could define collaborative projects whose implementation would, on the one hand, contribute to maximize the benefits of AI for education management and delivery, um, empowering teachers and um, improving and personalizing the, the learning of students and the learning assessment, offering lifelong opportunities for all, uh, making uh, the delivery of education more democratic, and on the other hand, um, addressing cross-cutting issues um, about the education of AI itself, promoting the, the democratic use of AI, the equitable and inclusive use of AI, um, uh, training students so they become more responsible producers and users of AI, and monitoring the impacts of AI on education. Um, before I close, uh, as we were thinking about these, uh, these committees, we realized that in order to advance the public good in each of these areas, uh, there were several governance issues uh, that had to be considered. 
that are tied to the proposed progress with AI. And so, for example, the internationally funded efforts on the use of AI for antibiotics resistance uh, drug discovery would require defining new rules of engagement with private or public organizations doing the actual R&D, for example, regarding data sharing, standards, information sharing, licensing, and so on. And so, so for this reason, um, we, 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 we started thinking about cross-cutting um, uh, governance issues, and I'm going to let Raja continue on that. So the other priorities are more related to governance, but specifically one of them is about social media. And uh, for social media, there is, as uh, everyone knows, an issue with transparency. Uh, so we would like to have a committee also that is focusing on uh, all the governance issues and specifically transparency within uh, social media. Uh, we think this is a great field for international cooperation. Um, and uh, there is another uh, committee which is uh, even wider. Of course, there are governance uh, issues in all the domains uh, because, for example, for drug discovery, you need governance issues. But specifically, we decided to create a transversal committee devoted to the issues of governance uh, beyond those public good oriented use of AI. Uh, and this committee will address overarching AI governance issues such as uh, certification, assessment, audit mechanisms used to evaluate AI systems uh, for responsibility and trustworthiness. Uh, of course, this needs to define metrics based on accountability, transparency, safety, fairness, respect for human rights, and the promotion of equity. So this is uh, our uh, focus for the next three to six months. And uh, now uh, uh, we have to also discuss about what happens next. Th thank you, Raja. Um, and we were definitely looking forward to the group's work on governance. Um, Joshua, coming back to you, uh, and, and quite briefly, because we only have a couple minutes left at best, um, what is your vision two years out for what the working group can achieve? Um, what does success look like for you? And how do you envisage coordinating and cooperating with other groups? Obviously, coming from the OECD, I'm particularly interested in building out synergies with the OECD AI Policy Observatory and OECD Network of Experts on AI, but there are many other uh, important initiatives out there as well. And, and what do you see as some of the main challenges uh, ahead uh, for GPAY and its working groups to successfully accomplish its mandate. Go ahead. I mean, really, success is about impact, right? Um, if we, you know, come up with reports that that stay and, and don't have any consequences, I think uh, that would be failure. Uh, at the same time, I think we we have um, a, a, a mission. We have an obligation to do our best to use the scientific insights of all the experts in the working group to convince governments that action needs to be taken. Now, um, I want to say a few words about some of these uh, directions that we're looking at in, in the future. So first of all, um, I, we didn't mention them directly in the uh, 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 subcommittees that, that we talked about, but some of the topics that we care about will um, will be across all of these committees and future committees, such as issues of inclusion and diversity. Uh, and making sure that um, the uh, application of AI is going to be taking into account the effect on the most vulnerable people on this planet. Um, in, in, in addition to the SDGs that we've already uh, started working on, uh, we're thinking about other SDGs where we know that AI could make a difference, uh, whether it's in areas like hunger or peace, um, but also maybe more generally, about the sort of international coordination mechanisms for funding and governance of publicly funded AI for social good projects. And, and of course, um, I think to go back to your first question, in order to be successful, we have to coordinate with um, uh, many other international organizations and in particular the OECD because they're a strong link with the OECD. But I think uh, depending on the SDG or, or depending on the domain, uh, we need to make sure that we uh, coordinate with uh, the, the other uh, uh, organizations that are thinking about the same question so that countries end up 
um, uh, putting their efforts together and changing the world in a positive way. Thank you so much, Yoshua and Raja, for this great opportunity to learn more about the work of the, the GPAY's group on responsible AI. I look forward to continuing the conversation soon.